So this is the self-development with tactics. Book. So, hello and welcome back to the next episode of the Self-Development with Tactics fucking podcast. <laughs> I'm pretty happy to be here again. And as you can see in the background, to really start ahead right now, because I do quite uh, want to limit my time today, because I quite feel like, yeah, you know, sleeping a little bit more than, you know, five hours would be actually a good thing for my health, because I actually feel like, okay, um, now I'm actually, I pretty much think this is the first time that I'm actually feeling like, um, not that good because of sleep. You know, I've always been like, okay, you know, uh, why people do just, you know, complain about when they not, you know, get their eight, of, eight hours of sleep or the seven hours or whatever they need. And uh, yeah, I quite feel it now that I still, or I'm, I on my own, just, you know, kind of got the experience that, okay, you know, having way too less sleep for, you know, a pretty or relatively uh, long period of time isn't the best thing you can do. Definitely not. And therefore I'm quite, um, yeah, quite humble or not humble, but I do just, um, yeah, want to make the effort to just be able to really go to bed today on an appropriate time so that, you know, I do get a little bit more of sleep and I do am more productive. And, you know, this, you know, always in the end just really plays into my hands of being, you know, more productive or more creative or whatever. But um, we will go straight ahead with simplification and if I haven't just you know explained it or just pointed it out, um, we are going ahead with extreme ownership by Yoko Willink and life, uh, life something with B. I don't know. <laughs> Nevertheless, uh, we will go ahead with the simplification. Willink stresses that as a leader, you need to ensure that your plans, orders, and tactics are simple and straightforward. Uh, when things get complicated, people misunderstand, wires get crossed, and inevitably things go wrong. As a leader, you need to communicate the plans and tactic as tactics as simple as possible. Make sure that everyone understands every every step, and be sure to not overcomplicate any stage. Consider, however, on the team. Consider whoever on the team has the least knowledge or ability and address your whole team as if they all had the same understanding. Ensure that everyone is on the same page when approaching a mission. I think this is especially important and I kind of kind of visualize it as, you know, if you're really into a team or really in a team that, you know, has to do something with war, like, you know, the SEALs have, it is, I think, pretty fucking crucial to have a team that, you know, um, you know everyone is at the same stage, you know. Yeah, obviously the leader, the leader of this um, kind of group is or might even be a little bit higher in terms of, you know, his or her level or some kind of. Um, but I think at the end, nobody should, should feel like, okay, you know, I'm, you know, not as much worth as, you know, him or her or whatever. I think this is pretty important to just, um, yeah, kind of make sure that nobody is, um, I don't know, don't feeling bad when they're just, you know, in the mission or uh, quite during the mission. So that may or might uh, would have come up with or might would have ended in just having, um, yeah, mental, yeah, mental problems and not actually just, you know, communication problems with your teammates. Um, yeah, <laughs> I hope you understood what I just explained. <laughs> so the prioritization and the execution. Uh, Willing points out that that at all times a leader needs to be aware of their top priorities and this is i think especially also important in just your your everyday life you know if you just kind of miss out your values and your end goals um you kind of find yourself on the wrong path towards it because you haven't set the you know priorities or the top priorities the right way and i would really suggest you in terms of the top priorities um go and check out the one thing by um I don't know, unfortunately, but I've actually uh, did a video and or podcast episode about this book or about this book summary. It was a pretty credible book, I think, um, you know, even though I just was before reading it like, okay, you know, I yeah, I knew this book for a pretty long time before it and I was like, you know, I do not have to go through it because they actually only suggest you to do one particular thing, which, you know, wasn't quite the thing I would have suggested before, but now I'm like, okay, you know, this is a pretty valuable book and I do now understand that, um, yeah, I do quite understand and kind of uh, acknowledge there or 
this book's um, ranking on Amazon because it is actually you know uh, pretty it's pretty high in the ranking as I remember I think it's you know under the top top ten I think or something I don't know but um, I didn't really just you know understood it quite before but but yeah um, having your priorities and setting your priorities in the uh, in the right way or just having the right priorities is at my point of view crucial for everyone or every human being you know maybe even yeah actually for every every single creature on this planet to kind of get towards towards their goals if you know you are a dog and you know your priority should definitely be just you know uh, eating something and if you do set your priorities on doing something else you might just starve this is a very very bad example i know <laughs> but um, but yeah, so at the end, it's kind of, at my point of view at least, kind of important for every human or every creature on this fucking planet. So when facing a problem, a leader needs to know exactly what needs to be addressed first and what can be dealt with later. And this is very important because if you are like, okay, you know, you decide that something is very important that at the end turns out to be not that, not that important as you just imagine it, you just really fuck a lot of time. And this is, I think, pretty fucking crucial, especially when you are in war. And, you know, I think in war, it's not like you can waste a lot of time. So you don't want to be overwhelmed with numerous issues, unable to identify which one is the most important. The key principle that Willink wants leaders to remember is that you need to prioritize and execute. Especially when under pressure, this requires leaders to be able to predict possible outcomes, anticipate problems and ideally always be thinking one or two steps ahead. If a leader can stay ahead of the game, they should be able to consider solutions to their problems before they even rise or arise. So how leaders should uh, prioritize and execute in business, teams and organizations. So the first thing is, and this is actually that part of the book that I didn't came to. So I actually kind of read, um, you know, up to this point, but actually not this point. So therefore, I'm pretty interested in, you know, what's coming up. And um, yeah, if I should actually continue reading it, if I should stop, you know, reading it. Uh, yeah, you know, I will see. Um, so be able to identify the problem with the highest priority. I think, you know, this might sometimes be pretty easy, but I think a lot of times it's just fucking difficult. The second thing is relay. Uh, I think it's rely. Let's see. <laughs> I can actually just, you know, look it up. Um, it's relay. Relay the priorities to your team in a straightforward manner. I think this kind of plays into the hands of actually being clear with your orders and clear with your um, kind of, yeah, with the orders you're making because, in my point of view, this is also pretty fucking important. Why? Um, because if you just, you know, you know, speak maybe in such a complicated way that the people you're serving or the people you're in a team with do not understand what you want from them, and this might not be the best situation, you know, you, you want to be if you're just, you know, kind of, you know, commanding a very, very maybe expensive if it's, you know, in terms of organization or in terms of, you know, expensive in terms of, you know, quite lives in war. Um, if you're just, you know, leading this operation or or whatever. Um, yeah. The third thing is um, establish the best solution, asking top, top teammates for assistance when possible. Um, and at my point of view is, I kind of feel like, okay, a lot of people just, you know, look at a leader like, you know, he's always doing it, you know, on his own or on, on her own. And, you know, he or she doesn't have any help and nobody is just, you know, doing something but her. But I think at the end, it is just, you know, crucial as well to really um, pretty much involve your teammates as well. And to just, you know, let them be part of certain, um, yeah, certain decisions, actually. And, you know, especially when they are just, you know, uh, quite... Uh, truthful or quite you just really believe in them and you believe in them being able to make a decision that might just um, enhance or to um, so their ability to just help you um, maybe advance your um, decision making skill even or just making better skills uh, better better decisions actually um, and therefore I do quite feel okay you should you know totally just pretty much involve your teammates as well um, execute the solution, redirect all efforts until the highest priority issue is solved. Uh, then repeat these steps with the remaining problems. 
and acknowledge that priorities can change based on circumstances, ensure that everyone is aware when this happens. And I think, you know, this also just plays into the hands of pretty much giving, uh, yeah, clear orders and direct orders, because, um, yeah, if you do not, or even just, you know, point out orders or, or make orders at all, because if you are like, you know, this is something clear and this is something obvious, I'm not going to tell it to people because they actually know it already. This is, at my point of view, just a really bad approach to the whole explanation, whole communication thing, because you're obvious, and this is, I think, actually something that I've learned through, uh, what was the book called? I think it was actually, this is Marketing by Seth Godin, but I can't remember. It was especially, uh, or actually one of the latest books I have gone through with you, actually, Maybe you can even remember. So if you remember, <laughs> just hit me up on a social media platform you like the most. Just, you know, DM me and I will totally just say it in the next episode. This would be totally nice. <laughs> so therefore, I do not have to look it up myself, which I'm, you know, maybe even not doing because, uh, yeah. But um, your obvious doesn't have to be the other people's or <clears throat> the other person's obvious as well. So therefore... Um, yeah, this pretty much underlines and you know emphasizes the point that I'm quite often making, which is that we are all individuals. It is in terms of um, yeah how you're feeling, how you're behaving, um, yeah how you're thinking. Pretty much, if I haven't pointed out just yet, um, also in terms of actually you know what are your obvious things or your obviouses, um, what are the things you just um, yeah pretty much appreciate or like. Or there are certain, uh, there are quite a lot of factors or there are quite a lot of things that, you know, really just show how, you know, how much of an individual we are, we all are. And I think it's just incredible that a lot of people, you know, yeah, a lot of people, yeah, I would say people do just still generalize a lot of things, especially in the um, kind of self-development area and the self-improvement area where a lot of people just, for example, be like, and this is, you know, quite an example I always point out. Um, yeah, quite a lot of people just say, okay, you have to read this certain much um, or this certain amount of uh, uh, sites of a book or pages of a book each day to actually be successful, which is totally dumb. Because if it's not something you're actually, uh, first of all, passionate about, or second of all, it's not the way you can learn the best. And if you know a better way, then totally don't do it. Because it wouldn't make any sense if you just know, okay, through maybe audiobooks or podcasts, I learn much faster and much better than through reading. Maybe you do just have, do just have to compromise certain things because um, there, is, uh, yeah, there is a problem because some books might not be available in an audiobook form. And therefore, you do just you know, kind of have to compromise in some sort of way. But um, I hope or I do just, you know, I know that you get what I mean. And this is very, very important. We are all individuals and this is something we should never quite forget. Um, don't let tunnel vision on, on one priority mean that you fail to see other problems arising. At my point of view, this is a problem a lot of people have in life as gen in general. And it's the same thing with me. You know, often it feels like there are some certain things that are so that they should be so clear for me, but I'm actually not seeing them. And then if I just see them and I kind of, you know, kind of feel like, okay, you know, this was actually it. This was maybe actually the thing that I was, that I was always searching for. And I quite feel like not dumb, but I feel like, um, I don't know. I feel like, okay, you know, it is so easy and I should have seen it much earlier, but I, because of my tunnel vision, because of my, maybe, I don't know, because of just, of just my vision, I wasn't pretty much able to see those obvious things. Or maybe it, it, it maybe they weren't, <laughs> maybe they weren't actually obvious. Maybe these kind of things got obvious through, you know, the knowledge I gained or the experiences I gained or just... Um, you know, other factors. This could also be true just just to, uh, I don't know, yeah. <laughs> so decentralizing, um, pretty interesting word. So Willink explains that it is a fact that leaders are not able to be in complete control of, uh, need, not able to be in, co in complete control of and effectively manage more than 10 people. Which is quite interesting. I think I haven't have never quite thought about quite an actual number of people that you can actually manage. So this becomes particularly clear in times of stress. This is why Willink Willink believes that being able to decentralize all of the power is a fundamental part of successful leadership. When you are 
uh, when you are faced with a team of more than 10 people, you need to separate the team uh, out into into groups of four or five. Within the smaller groups, identify one person as the leader. This selected leader needs to work closely, closely with the other leaders and the overall, overall leader in order to ensure that, uh, that that they are all working towards the same goal with the same tactics. And this is just, you know, a pretty, I do not want to say obvious or common common sense approach because, you know, this is just my my view. But um, I think a lot of people just, you know, were thinking about that and it makes sense. But I still do think that, you know, this is such a certain thing that I was just, you know, kind of talking about right before, which is kind of, you know, one of these things that you kind of just should see, but you're actually not seeing them because it's, you know, too obvious or, um, yeah, just too obvious, some sort of. Um, But it makes sense. Um, But I think you do just have to really just know, um, you know, who you're going to be, who you, uh, whom you want to be the leader. (laughs) <laughs> fuck this shit um who the leader should be yeah let's make it simple um i think this is important and it is also important to just um kind of be truthful to yourself and to the people as well and be like okay you know i kind of thought at first that you were a great leader but i actually think like okay you know this other person is a better one and therefore he or she should actually actually deserve this place and then pretty much change the whole thing up you know this is I think, you know, on the other side, um, which is, you know, a pretty negative side maybe um, for you, because, you know, if you aren't that person, that's, you know, quite, yeah, but, you know, just, you know, um, yeah, just sacrificing some people's um, kind of feelings with kind of just, you know, having a better chance to to win the whole mission or to, to win the whole operation. Uh, victorious leaders and, <clears throat> sorry, not and sorry, but and planning. The first step in any planning progress is a is a thorough. What the fuck is this fucking shit called? And this. Oh yeah. So though, thorough, thorough. Okay. Analysis of the mission at hand. Willing stresses the importance that the leader understands the ins and outs of the entire mission, and it is able to rely the necessary information to their team. It is important that the leader uh, identifies different possible outcomes and problems that may arise in the early stages. Um, I kind of feel like that I'm always just pretty much translating it into war and you know war scenarios, and I just imagine just people you know who are sitting around a map or just a leader who just watches a map. And or explains the map to the other people while pretty much thinking of all the outcomes that you know could occur or could come up to just be like okay should I tell them or should I not <clears throat> uh, should I actually give them more information or would more information be too much and that, this is I think actually something that you should also just um, just look out for if it's you know maybe too too much information or too less information I think both extremes aren't that good Um, i would say that less information is totally worse than having too much information Um, but too much information on the other hand could you just could you just you know could let you just feel like um kind of stuck or some kind of confused maybe so a broad and ambitious mission results in lack of focus ineffective execution and mission creep to prevent this the mission must be carefully refined and simplified so that it is explicitly clear and specifically focused to achieve the greatest strat- strategic vision for which that mission for which that mission is a part the mission must explain the overall purpose and desired result or end state of sorry of the operation so willing explains that further that further to having a th- thorough or yeah thorough thorough understanding of the entire so this is actually spelled t-h-o-r-o-u and g-h understanding of the entire mission a team that constantly revisits their strategies and measures their success will be more effective long term this will give teams the ability to adapt the strategy when required and learn valuable lessons they can take to further missions and um, and because i just read uh, or just read um measured successes this is also one of the points that i do just quite underline uh, yeah quite a lot of times which is that you actually should you know 
make yourself measurable goals or goals you can measure, which are not like, you know, saying I'm going to be rich, period. This is not a measurable goal because there is nothing to measure. But if you're like, you know, I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be having one million dollar or euro, whatever currency you're having in my bank account by the end of 2020, this is actually something you could measure or, and especially something that you could break down into very, very small pieces, so small pieces that you can actually pretty much act on this certain task that you want to achieve in quite one year or two, or two years, actually some sort of right now. And this is important that you can actually do something right now that will help you just achieve this certain goal you're having. And um, at my point of view, this is the only thing you can do with measurable goals or can do exactly with measurable goals. If you do think like, okay, I'm going to be rich, you might feel like, okay, you know, I do have to do or do have to get or make or earn as much money right now to actually kind of achieve this certain um, yeah, goal that I'm having. But um, this is something that's not exact and you can actually not measure, you know, measure it through through the whole scenario. But uh, if you're like, okay, um, I want to have 1 million at the end of 2020 and you just some kind of get stuck in the middle, you can actually, you know, rearrange everything and recalculate everything so that you can, you know, actually be sure that you're achieving your goal that you have set for yourself. Um, yeah. A leader's planning checklist. The first one is understand and, and analyze the mission. Be able to identify the end goal. This is very important. The second one is consider assets, resources, per, personnel and time restraints. Personal and personal. Is it, is it personal? Is this actually a right word? I kind of feel like this is... It's personal person yeah, never mind <laughs> let's give a fuck about this one the third one is uh, decentralize the power find the key leaders in your larger team to help plan the best strategy the fourth one is identify the best strategy consider the simplest approach and i would you know just underline simplest you know 100 fucking times because i do quite feel like this is not you know always clear and it wasn't always clear for myself as well um, because, you know, it always or also has something to do with, you know, who you are. If you kind of like really complicated shit, you might just make a plan that's very really complicated for you because you might feel like, okay, you know, a lot of people can't just read it and do not understand it. Therefore, I'm feeling good. First of all, this is something completely shit to kind of think about. <laughs> Second of all, this will never just, you know, give you the, you know, give you a better chance of actually accomplishing this fucking mission than just yeah, then just being like very, very fucking simple. There is the end goal. The end goal is one having, uh, the, the end goal is having one million dollars in your bank account. And not maybe like the end goal is having uh, four times 250k in my bank account because this is just an overcomplication of a certain very simple fucking task. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, the fourth one is identify the best strategy, consider the simplest approach. This is something I've already read. Okay. <laughs> the fifth one is ensure key leaders understand the selected plan. Yeah. And if not, I would totally just change them up and see, okay, if, you know, the other leaders will just uh, pretty much get what you just explained or you want them to understand. The sixth one is, or you just have to pretty much... This is, you know, also something that kind of plays into the hands of this book, actually, because this book at first always explains that, um, okay, you are the leader, you are to be blamed for fucking everything. If you want it or not, you're the fucking leader and you should actually do it as well, because um, actually, and this is something they actually uh, didn't quite point out in the summary, but it was quite important in the uh, actual book, which was a kind of story. Um, I will just make it a little bit shorter. At the end, um, yeah, Willing just fucked everything up. You know, the whole mission was in some kind of trouble and everything was kind of, you know, doing pretty worse, or pretty bad. And at the end, Willink was like, okay, um, to all the guys, he made some kind of game out of it. But, you know, at the end, he just asked, um, yeah, who do you know is just to be blamed for, you know, what happened right now? And, you know, there was actually a friendly fire and or actually they kind of, named it differently blue fire 
something else, something, you know, pretty interesting. But um, it was friendly fire, so they shot it, you know, at themselves, basically. And, um, yeah, so, you know, at the very end, he just told them, it was my fault, um, because he's the leader, and he's the one who should explain the whole plan and the whole mission exactly and you know in the most simplest form he is the leader and he is responsible for how a team is doing he is responsible to have an overview of everything he is just responsible of what happened into this mission and why one of his you know fellow friends got hurt actually in the face area and and they had to bandage him up completely um, which i think wasn't pretty something nice and i think he even lost his left eyesight if I remember correctly, which is definitely something that's very, very bad. Um, uh, where did I stop? Uh, sixth, one, seventh one is eliminate the possibility of of as many risks as possible. Uh, the eighth one is delegate to junior leaders where possible, where possible. The ninth one is keep a close eye on the plan and any new information that arises. Totally. Because, you know, I think in the process you really have to be able to kind of change the plan up a little bit or make it even better or just adapt it to the certain situation or the scenario you are quite in now. Because nothing in life is just, you know, completely a certain way. I think always, you know, things are just evolving and processing and therefore, especially in war, and I'm quite still always thinking about war, um, this is something that's just a dynamic thing. Uh, just it's It's like chess, you know, nothing is, you know, standing the the same fucking way all the time your you know your opposite will move as well so yeah um the tenth one is clearly bri clearly brief all personnel and ensure everyone has a complete understanding pretty important the eleventh and nearly last one allow time for allow time for questions and discussions from your team members and the twelfth one is, once executed, establish a debrief where you discuss lessons learned and things you could have done better. And this is, at my point of view, very important to have a debrief. And this was actually the thing that they had to do. Uh, no, they had... Did they had a debrief or was it a regular brief? I don't remember. But actually, they do just had some kind of a briefing, you know, because they just had a lot of troubles to just um, pretty much... Um, kind of accelerate the uh, communication again and to establish the communication again and you know to really just be sure that everything will just go on in a very clear and very um, yeah nice way from this point on and I think just at the end saying okay this is something we did we did well and just you know pretty much uh, being truthful to yourself and saying okay this is something that I did well I can just you know, just be honest to yourself. and But, you know, there are also certain things that you could have done way better than you actually did. And this is also something you have to be truthful to yourself because if you're like, you know, it's, you know, everything was pretty good, you will never just learn from your failures or learn from the things you might have fucked up or you learn um, to, you know, kind of see things in perspective and be like, okay, you know, this is actually something that I could have done better. And, uh, yeah, but also I would say on the other hand, because, you know, there are, you know, always some extremes. On the other hand, do not be just, you know, do not cripple yourself by saying, you know, I could have done this better and that better and, you know, whatever. Um, you could, yeah, totally. But, you know, just think about the circumstances and about the scenario and about whatever factors there were. Um, it's actually very, 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 very... Uh, less time left actually not all the time left and a pretty small amount of uh, points left and i do quite think if i actually should go through them and kind of not do what i actually wanted to do um no, uh, I'm gonna, th gonna talk about you, but I talk about I talk with you about a certain thing. I think um, that I, you know, pretty much was quite thinking while I was going going uh, yeah going home from the train, um, which was should I even go on with doing what I'm doing right now? And and this is quite something that I ask myself pretty often because maybe and I think this is actually the point. Maybe it's because I just don't see any any results i see some results 
yet or maybe not the desired ones and this is something that i should and have to be clear um about because um this is just a long-term game this is just a marathon this is not something that you will get immediately after only i think four months or five months even in um it might you know take up to 10 years that actually what i'm doing right now and it you know also should involve or uh, yeah should involve some kind of evolving um yeah i think this just can take a lot of time but I think it is also important to just, you know, be kind of clear about when to stop and when to quit and when to pretty much know, okay, this is the time to stop and this is this is not something for me. And, you know, um, Gary Vee, because I just, uh, you know, listened to a, a, pet, a podcast episode of him, which is something that I really like to do because I like to listen to people who are just, you know, speaking and who are just, you know, explaining certain things that I'm actually passionate about or that I just like or, you know, giving me some motivation um, to, to do the things that I, I want to do. And he just said, okay, you know, if you're doing something, if you're just, you know, doing something that you actually pretty much like and you just wanted to do it and you start this certain thing and you are fucking seven years in and you did everything every single day, you put in the most power you could you could have and after seven years nothing happened and you got nothing out of it and the, the ROI was pretty much zero. Then he said, then the market decided that your product or you in this certain position is not good enough. And that's it. And I think that makes sense totally because, um, yeah, you know, after such a long period of time without seeing any results, um, but actually having, you know, put in a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of effort um, might, you know, first of all, maybe just, you know, tell you, okay, your product is just shit or what you're doing is just shit. And this is actually something that I've been uh, thinking about as well. But uh, it could also mean like, okay, you shouldn't do what you're doing right now. You're not made for what what you're doing right now. Um, maybe even it's, you know, about the market. The market isn't actually ready for um, what you're saying, for what you're doing, which is, I think, some kind of not that often appearing uh, situation in nowadays life. I think some years ago it you know might have been something different. But um, what I wanted to say you know in between was that I quite also think about doing something else. Maybe doing something that's more about um, a little bit breathe, a little bit more information, less time maybe. Um, yeah, but the thing is what I'm doing then about the podcast and doing both things isn't quite working out for me, I think. Um, then, you know, one of these two channels, either YouTube or the podcast, um, would be a little bit, yeah, not that growing as I want it to be. But um, I quite feel like, you know, what I'm doing right now is just one of the perfect things that I could do. But I do still just understand that a lot of people might not be that interested in seeing uh, a guy with a fucking pink shirt um, sitting there talking into his fucking phone, which doesn't make any sense at all, uh, talking about a book summary that you could actually just, you know, go through on yourself and just pretty much watching him doing this. Uh, I quite feel like, you know, there is a market for everyone, first of all, but I do quite also understand, okay, some people might not do what I might not like what I'm doing right now, you know, which makes total sense. And I think you have to be clear of this in any fucking situation. Um, some people just aren't interested in what you're doing. But, um, but, 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 uh, yeah, I just thought about m maybe changing it up a little bit, but I think I will just, you know, let a bit, just see, okay, um, you know, what happens until um, I'm one year in because, yeah, you know, until then there's just a lot of episodes on my channel, on my podcast, and I think the more I put out, the more I do, the more I, uh, yeah, the more people will just probably, you know, come across my stuff. And maybe some of them are the early adopters or early birds and will just, you know, spread my words and spread what I'm doing quite right here. Um, but with that being said, actually, today's episode was fucking great, to be honest. Um, you know, it is all always just in terms of speaking that I actually think that an episode is good or bad. Um, because I understand, first of all, it's, you know... <clears throat> It's nicer for me to be more fluent and, you know, more able to speak in a proper way. And I also think that it, you know, is the same thing for you as well. But without not <laughs> quite wasting uh, more time, you know, that I could have used for actually going through the summary a little bit more. Um, yeah, 
I wish you a very, very wonderful day and or night, whatever time zone you're in. Uh, I hope you have the success, the wealth, the happiness, especially the happiness, because happiness is fucking important. Uh, I hope you're giving back something, because, um, yeah, especially in your progress, giving back to the people, um, whatever you can do will just, you know, make you, at my point of view, pretty happy. And um, just think about your legacy and try to be uh, the nicest one, even though it's, um, yeah, I'm not able to do it as well. So it's nothing to just get crippled by, but, you know, having having a view on it and just, you know, taking care about it in the macro is, I think, a good strategy. And yeah, with that being said, I love you. <laughs>